Students, counselors, families, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever it is you are joining us. Thank you so much for joining StriveScan and Cache's virtual college exploration program. A few housekeeping items before we hand it over to our panelists. First and foremost, you're encouraged to ask questions throughout the session via the Q&A button that you see in the bottom of your screen. When you submit a question, it gets sent to all of our panelists, and they will work to answer the question during the session and at the conclusion of the session. They may not get to every question during this 45 minutes, but they will receive a copy of questions and will be able to follow up if appropriate. As a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. If you do have questions, you'll need to type them in through the Q&A button. This is one of about 50 panel presentations and individual information sessions being run by the Cache and StriveScan virtual program. You can sign up for the additional programs at strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM, the same place you went to register for today's session. When you sign up for this session, you received a barcode. You do not need that barcode for this virtual event. And finally, I am recording this session and all of the sessions sessions, and the recordings will be made available at strivescan.com slash virtual slash them, the exact same place you went to sign up for today's session. Thanks so much, and I'm going to hand it over to our panelists. All right, everyone. Hello. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Just give me one second here. Okay, and with that, you have your presentation. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sammy Rose Sinclair. I am a senior admission counselor uh, at Georgia Tech. So I'll be hanging out with you today for about 45 minutes to go over a little bit about who we are at Georgia Tech and the application process that you might be looking at in the next few months or a few years. You also have Ashley Brookshire and, and Sarah Riggs um, in the chat with me who will be answering your questions. And, and as Zach mentioned, we might not get to all of the questions. And so I'll make sure to wrap up at the end with a few other ways that you can contact us in the coming months so that we can continue this conversation that we begin today. Um, that I think is all of our sort of housekeeping bits. So with that, I think we can go ahead and get started, right? Um, and talk a little bit about who we are at Georgia Tech. So at Georgia Tech, um, you will often hear that our students are creating the next, right? That we are, you know, problem solvers and innovators and change makers. And that's who we've always been, right? As an institution that was founded um, in the Reconstruction era. And that is very much who we still are today. So, you know, in the coming months, or again, years, if you're just starting this journey right now, um, you're gonna hear a lot about fit, right? Fit in your college search, and, and what does that mean? Um, I think one way to approach whether you fit with a college is to think about, you know, their ideals, their ethos, and, and whether or not that matches with your passions and the things that are most important to you. So at Georgia Tech specifically, I think a student that is a good fit is a student who sees a problem and asks why, right? Why does this exist? And I would even go beyond that to say that student might then ask how, right? How do I create change? How do I leverage my strengths and the strengths collaborate with the folks around me to create change and to solve this problem? If that's something that resonates with you, if you are that student, that is a good fit for Georgia Tech. Our students and our communities are, are creating change, right? Change for good. Um, you're gonna see this really at the, the very core of who we are and that, you know, and who we've always been and that goes back to our motto. So you're seeing it on the upper portion of your screen here. Our motto at Georgia Tech is progress and service, right? So our students are moving forward with a vision, but they're doing so with the needs of the communities around them in mind. So I think the best way to illustrate this is to kind of show you what this looks like in motion. And that's, and that's what we're looking at here, one example. So one example of this, as we're looking at, is the Inventure Prize. Now, the Inventure Prize is an annual innovation competition for our students to pitch their ideas to create change. So I feel like most of you might be familiar with the US TV show Shark Tank, right? So think like Shark Tank for our students. 
So this really is a year or longer endeavor for students to perhaps prototype in our makerspaces, which is are the largest student-run makerspaces in the country. They may get feedback from fabulous and wonderful mentors and faculty across campus, and then have multiple rounds of pitches before the final six teams present their pitch to a panel of judges on finale night. Now that final competition isn't just in front of those judges, it's also in front of a live and televised audience. So first prize that night takes home $20,000 in a free patent filing. And to be clear, that is a patent filing that is in your name, right? It's your intellectual property. Second prize is $10,000 in a patent filing and People's Choice takes home $5,000. All right, so you know, with that in mind, what did these students do? So Ethos Medical is a team of mechanical and biomedical engineers who looked at the process for procedures that involve inserting a needle into the spine. So some of us may be familiar with that in terms of like an epidural, right? But you may also think of a lumbar puncture, which is also called a spinal tap. So current standard of practice is to insert the needle into the spine without visual guidance initially, instead of feeling for markers on the spine, guiding the needle into an opening between vertebrae, sometimes as small as a millimeter. So as you can imagine, in some patients, this is just really hard and, and they cannot do it successfully. And ultimately, 20% of patients need to be sent up to radiology for this procedure. And as you can imagine, of course, you know, that is time consuming for the patient and costly for the hospital when this is you know, often not billable. So what did Ethos Medical create? They innovated a needle guidance solution that integrates the portable ultrasound that a lot of hospitals already have available to them. And, and basically they can insert the needle, you know, into basically like a, they created this attachment to the guide of the ultrasound. And then that allows then the practitioner to align and insert the needle with real-time guidance, all right? So this is what our students are doing, right? They saw a massive problem in a massive industry, the medical in industry, and they tackled it head-on as undergraduate students and since graduating has received hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants from the National Science Foundation to continue R&D research and development on this product. So at Georgia Tech, you can do this. You can create lasting real change that goes you know, so far beyond the institution and Georgia Tech will give you the tools to do so. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, or perhaps you know, wanna see other teams and what they've done, um, because it's televised, it is all available for streaming. So go ahead, if you pop open another browser and type in InventurePrize, you've got something that you can watch, you know, years of competitions that you can watch later on tonight. That you know, change-making, that progress and service has to start with a strong foundation on campus and in the classroom. So taking a look at you know, some of the numbers that you're seeing on campus, or excuse me, on your screen here, let's go ahead and start from the upper left-hand corner. So Georgia Tech is a mid-sized public institution. If you like to think about size in terms of people, you'll see on your screen that you have about 16,000 undergraduate students. And I would say just about the same number of graduate students that make up the student body as a whole. If you like to think of size in terms of, you know, in a more traditional sense, you know, you have about mm, 400 acres on campus. You could walk across campus comfortably in 20, 25 minutes or so. It's continuous acreage in the middle of Atlanta. So those 16,000 students are studying, it's actually across 36 majors now. And that's actually how new our newest major is in building construction. That's something that, that sort of just got added in the past few months. Our process for thinking about, you know, how we add majors and, and what we provide as a major, because 36 is not many, is, you know, is this something that our students 
can go out into the world after graduation, find opportunity here and create opportunity, create change, right? And does that intersect, uh, intersect with our strengths and who we are as an institution? If we find you know, strong answers in both of those questions, that's a major that we're going to offer. So all in all, that's 36 majors across six colleges. That's probably not a lot, right? I, th I think you'll find that similar size institutions, you know, may have double or triple that. But at Georgia Tech, I think there is an understanding that we are not all things to all people. And we by no means intend to be, right? You know, our students typically have a strong understanding of their passions, their interests, and how they'd like to explore that and advance that at Georgia Tech when they're, when they're coming into this process here. All of those majors will also add, you know, across different colleges, you know, are going to all be Bachelor of Science degrees with that same thread of, of research and innovation and technology throughout. So ultimately, you're going to find a lot of opportunity to collaborate with, with peers, you know, not only in your discipline, but just as importantly, who are not in your discipline as well, right? Now, moving across our screen here, you're seeing this, this big number, this 97% retention rate. And you may hear, again, retention rate is just one of those terms that's gonna pop up quite a bit in the coming months. And so I wanna make sure we unpack that and we all kind of have an understanding of what that means. So retention rate, is the amount of students who, who come to an institution for their first year, and then the, you know, the percent of those who stay through to their second year. So while no institution has 100%, the national average, I believe, is in, in about the 60s, making 97% within the top 25 colleges in the country, six of which, including Georgia Tech, are public. So a lot of times when you hear colleges talk about retention rates, you're going to, you know, they, it might be an indicator of student satisfaction or student success, you know, which I, I would say could be true here, definitely. And then I think what this means that our retention rate is, is among the highest in the country is that our students, when they come to Georgia Tech, they are well prepared to come, but then also well supported when they get here right? That they're finding a network socially, academically. They have opportunities that are advancing their interests in the classroom, outside the classroom. It's affordable for them to continue their education. And so those are sort of, when you break down that number, those are some of the things that you might see there. They're also supported, you know, they have opportunities to be successful um, academically. And I think really that starts inside the classroom. So this middle number that you're seeing here, 85% of classes have fewer than 50 students. That's also a really wonderful question to ask as you are exploring colleges over, over the coming months. Um, you know, and I think even going further in terms of, of what does that experience look like as a student at Georgia Tech, you know, you may come in and have a few uh, lecture classes that are on a larger style, what you think of as, you know, a lecture 100 plus, you know, so on. Those will break down into recitation or lab sections of 20, 25 students. So whether you're that student that likes to sit back and absorb and kind of observe or you're that student that likes to discuss and engage we can meet you where you are but ultimately when you put it all together the average class size at georgia tech is going to be somewhere between 26 to 33 and that are you know typically your lectures are going to be taught by faculty and they are among you know, the, the top in their fields, not only in the academic sense, but also that a lot of them are working and are and actively involved in the very industries that you are interested in pursuing after graduation. And so you have consistent access to wonderful resources and mentors while at Georgia Tech. Now, I think just as important as what a that our students are doing inside the classroom is, is what they're doing outside the classroom. 
as an institution that started with just two buildings, right, a lecture hall and a trade shop where students would switch to the sound of steam whistle, which we still have on our campus today, we really have always sort of implemented that idea of, of learn a day, work a day, or applying what you're learning as you're learning it. And that'll take shape in a few ways that we're going to look at here. So, I'll go from, from top down here. When we look at you know, opportunities in terms of career, we, we are really well set up not only to provide students opportunities to connect with employers, but everything that our students need to do to prepare to get to that point, right? So uh, Ashley and Sarah and I and our, and our colleagues, we work in a building called the Bill Moore Student Success Center. And we share that building with C2D2. It's almost like a Star Wars character, but like one letter off. So C2D2, Center for Career Discovery and Development, they are going to be your A to Z, you know, resume critiquing, uh, professional skills workshops, mock interviews, uh, workshops with employers, all of those things to get to the point where you are comfortable working with employers in settings like career fairs or interviews on campus um, for not only jobs after graduation, but also co-ops and internships. So internships, I feel like we tend to be a little bit more familiar with, so I'm not necessarily gonna spend as much time there. And actually, if you wanna spend a ton of time here, I was on a panel this morning, um, which will be available for download later, talking about co-ops and internships and, and research and what those are. But an internship is typically going to be a full-time, you know, once or, or part-time, one semester uh, experience with an employer. A co-op though, I think we tend to be a little less familiar with, and so I wanna make sure that we're all sort of on the same page here. So when a student does a co-op, they're going to go work full time with a company. They're not going to take classes for that semester, so they're not going to pay tuition for that semester, right? Now, the difference between that and say a full-time internship is that the student is going to do this three times with the same employer. So they're going to go off campus and, and work for a semester, then they're gonna come back and study. Work, study, work, study. So it's an alternating basis. You know, what we find and what's so important to us at Georgia Tech is that we want to make sure that we are connecting students to a marketplace and they are actively growing their network while they are still students. And, and we find that that is absolutely the case with our students, that 80% of them are, um, you know, taking advantage of internships and co-ops upward, upwards of 80% while they are students. And so a lot of times that means that they are going to have multiple job offers after graduating with higher starting salaries than those who don't take advantage of this. So this isn't something that's required of our students to do a co-op program, but we'll talk a little bit about some of the financial options that it enables our students to, to take advantage of because it is a paid program. And ultimately you'll find that it is the largest voluntary co-op program in the country. So students can do co-ops, internships, jobs, they can do them you know, locally, they can do them across the country, they can do them internationally. And between that and studying abroad, you're going to find that our students are disproportionately having international experiences before they graduate. Actually about 58% of our students have international experiences before they graduate. So that might look like, in addition to I mentioned working abroad, that might also look like studying abroad, either perhaps as an exchange student, right, where you're going to another university, you're going to another country and, and taking their class there. That might look like a very popular faculty-led programs at Georgia Tech, where our Georgia Tech faculty will take you know, a group of students and travel together with them. So they're doing both excursions and academics together around the world. And then you also have Georgia Tech campuses around the world. So you have GTL, I'll tell you, we do love our, we're gonna talk about Europe in a second. We love our abbreviation. So GTL is Georgia Tech Lorraine. That is our Georgia Tech campus in Metz, France. And then you also have one in Shenzhen. So it is very easy to think global and connect to a global marketplace while you're at Georgia Tech. 
And as I mentioned, this last little abbreviation here, Europe is going to be that, that office that connects you to research opportunities. That's actually the R and the O, undergraduate research opportunities at Georgia Tech, right? So you can do that for course credit. You can do that for pay, but about 40% of our students are taking advantage of the opportunity to explore research in or out of their major while at Georgia Tech. So that, that might be something, again, that you're working on that's already established. Or one really neat thing is that we have um, awards for students, PURA awards for students to explore their own research as well. So I talked a little bit about, you know, going around the country, going around the world even, but Atlanta in its own, in its own right is very much an extension um, of our students' experience, right? It is a fantastic city. So I know since we are sort of in this virtual setting today, a lot of you won't have had the chance to visit campus or Atlanta. So I just want to make sure I'm real quick painting a picture for you all. Actually, you know, so if you look at the very right hand side picture on your screen, you see this highway kind of cutting through the picture. And then you see some big brick buildings off to the lower hand corner of that picture on the left. That is the corner of Georgia Tech's campus. And so with that, we are very much, you know, at the center of the center, midtown <laughs> Atlanta, right? And that's one of the very neat things about being built in the 1800s is that we got to grow up and then watch the city grow up around us. So like I said earlier, 400 acres of continuous campus, and it's, it's very much a traditional campus, right? If you, if you want to think of, this feels silly sometimes to say, but like, brick walkways and trees and brick buildings and, and all of that, you have that sort of in what they call the Georgia Tech bubble. And then you look up and you see the skyline around you. So your housing, your athletic stadiums, your research centers and classrooms and, and your dining halls, everything that you need is right there for you. But then you go outside the campus and you have access to all of this, right? You have access to the city and everything that it has to offer. For many of our students, that means really incredible opportunities in terms of some of the, the employment and, and internships and co-ops that we talked about just a second ago. In fact, you know, with the number three most Fortune 500 company headquarters in the country, a lot of household names are right in your backyard. We work across the street from Coca-Cola, but you also have Delta and Home Depot and NCR and AT&T and, and so on and so forth. Just these, these companies who know the caliber of Georgia Tech students, know what you're capable of and are excited to, to work with you all. So that might take place, of course, you know, with students going around the city, but also with these folks coming to you in innovation centers and hubs right on campus. What those are innovation centers is we have this area of campus called Tech Square. It's right at the upper hand corner of campus, right where basically Midtown meets campus. And so it's this really excellent environment for that collaboration to take place. We're in these innovation centers. The companies will set up shop. There's like 30 of them to basically create space to work with our students on our students home turf. So like I said, you have a lot of those big name companies, you know, Boeing, Panasonic, Delta, you know, so on and so forth. And then on the other hand, on Tech Square, you also have a lot of incubators for startup culture from folks around Atlanta and from our own students. I'll also say, you know, I, I don't want to just give the sense that it is a great place for students to find opportunity to work, because while it absolutely is, it's also just a wonderful place to be a student within a 15 to 20 minute, you know, walking radius, you have everything you could need in terms of um, music venue, sports venue, excellent dining and, and theater and shopping. And really, it's just sort of an exciting place if you're not familiar with Atlanta to explore while you're a student. And if you're thinking even beyond that, well, we have the world's busiest airport, which means it's really easy for you to get out and explore. You know, 80% of the country's population is accessible in two hours or less from our airport. 
But also for some of those people that we talked about earlier, those recruiters, it's incredibly easy for them to access you. So with that, we can talk a little, switch gears a little bit and talk about return on investment. And to be fair, I already talked about some of the things, you know, I cheated a little bit and talked about some of the things that you're seeing on the left-hand side of your screen. Um, so we'll go back over those, but before we do that, let's go ahead and look at what you're seeing on the right. So as a public institution, you're seeing two sets of numbers for tuition and fees for folks who are in the state of Georgia and those who are not in the state, so out of state and um, international students. This is you know, a sticker price. It's not necessarily an out-of-pocket price. And so other factors that might contribute to that out-of-pocket price are going to be if you file for financial aid, which typically opens up in October. So you're going to also want to be mindful of those deadlines. Um, and that for Georgia Tech, you're going to file a, the FAFSA, the CSS profile. And then there's just a quick little Georgia Tech app to go ahead and tie it all together for you. Those are the documents that you file to get your aid package, right? Your grants, your loans, your work study, your so on and so forth. But in addition to that, as I sort of mentioned, and we'll move back to that, our students are often funding their studies with other creative ways to pay. So real quick, kind of going back to what we touched upon a little bit, co-op programs and internships, you are getting paid for those things, right? Co-op programs, I want to say the average per hour is like $18 to $20 an hour, I believe. And so that means, you know, while the money is your own, that might be something that you choose to reinvest in yourself, reinvest in that next semester of studies, since the co-ops are on that alternating semester basis. Same thing with an internship if you wanna reinvest that money. And again, as I sort of alluded to earlier, research participation, you can get course credit for it, but you can also get paid for it. Um, it, it really does depend on the lab. And so between that and part-time jobs, again, it's that same idea of, you know, basically getting paid and, and choosing if you want to use that to pay for some of your studies. And then finally, while you are applying for Georgia Tech, you also want to be mindful of uh, perhaps applying for outside scholarships. That might be something that, you know, comes in the form of something from your community, your school, different organizations. That might be something like Hope and Zell for our, our Georgia folks. Um, those are scholarships that you, you apply to and bring with you to Georgia Tech. And then we factor into your financial aid in addition to perhaps any scholarships that you are automatically considered for merit scholarships when you apply to Georgia Tech. Um, or if you're interested in merit scholarships at Georgia Tech, you do want to make sure that you're going ahead and applying early action. And that almost starts to bleed in and ta talking a little bit about the application process. So I think that's kind of a good point to go ahead and, and talk about that now. So let's switch over and, and talk a little bit about that, right? So what you're seeing on your screen here um, are some of the factors that we are going to look at in our selective holistic application review process. And I just threw a bunch of buzzwords at you. So let's go ahead and unpack that, right? What it means to apply to apply to a selective application or selective college application process is that that school will have many more applicants, many more qualified applicants than they have space available. Right. So, for example, in Georgia Tech's case this year, that meant that last year we reviewed 41 about thousand applicants and after the admission process and after enrolling, we are ultimately bringing in a, cl in a class that's probably going to be about 3200-3250 students. So in order to get to that point, right, of shaping that class, we need to use a holistic application review process. That means that your admission officers, like myself, like Sarah, like Ashley, not a computer, but admission committees, 
are going to go in and review not just what you've done in the form of preparation and testing, but you know who you are as a student, as a, as a community member, and how that would fit, right, what we talked about earlier, on Georgia Tech's campus. And to do that, we're going to go through some of these factors that you're seeing on your screen here. So I'm just going to go through those one by one. So academic preparation, that is not just your GPA, that's everything that goes into creating that GPA, right? The courses that you chose um, and you know how, not only how you performed, but how you challenged yourself within the context of what's available to you at your high school. That last part that I tagged on there at your high school is important because we know that every high school is so different. And so we need to think about using your school profile, which is something that our counselor tends to send us. What was available to you and what did you take advantage of? Especially as it relates, I would say, you know, to challenging yourself and especially in the areas that you, that you might be most interested in. You will put a major on your application at Georgia Tech. And while you will not ultimately be admitted by a major, right, your, your letter of admission won't have a major on it, you know, we can use that major as a lens in the application process to understand your passions, your interests, your strengths, and what you've, you've built up so far. So it just kind of gives us a lens into to who you are and what you're bringing as a student, right? Um, so, and let's see, so standardized testing. My, what is today's date? August 11th answer for you is that, yes, uh, as of now, Georgia Tech is required to require tests as a public institution in the state of Georgia. That's part of the university system of Georgia, right? So we understand that testing looks very different for students this year. And so what I hope that students kind of consider is, is again, it's, it's that humanity that people are reviewing your applications, right? People who are going through this same pandemic with you. And while that experience is different for everyone, we will ultimately approach that application process with grace, with benefit of the doubt, and with an understanding that your profile will look different from the profile of years past, that your activities will look different than the activities of years past, that your test scores may look different than the, the test scores of years past, all right? So know that while you know, tests, tests are required at Georgia Tech, that there is that understanding of the circumstances that surround it right now when our, uh, when our admission counselors will review those test scores. Now, you can submit either the SAT or the ACT, and you can self-report those test scores on your application. And we, it sounds a little bit silly at this point, but we will super score if you were able to take multiple tests. That's not including the writing portion of the, the test, so we're going to use the other uh, subsections of, of your test to go ahead and do that. Any other tests that I didn't just mention, so AP tests, IB tests, SAT subject tests, all the other abbreviations, those are optional, right? So um, if you have taken those already and you feel that they strengthen your application, you're welcome to submit them, but they are in no way required and you're not at a disadvantage if you don't. So let's talk a little bit about contribution to community and personal essays. I think those two go together really well because they tell us it's, it's your opportunity in your application to share your voice and tell us a little bit about who you are. So you're not going to, when you open up the common application, that's the application that you can use to apply to Georgia Tech, you're not going to find something that says contribution to community. You're probably going to see it in the form of activities, but we want you to take that mindset of how have you contributed, right? We're going to look at your impact, service, leadership, and longevity in those applications impact, service, leadership, longevity, right? How have you, going back to who we are as an institution, created change? How have you served? How have you led? And that's going to look a little bit different 
for everybody. And so sharing with us not only what you've done, but, but what it meant to you and what it meant to your community using all that space provided to you will be really important and helpful to us. In terms of personal essays, we're actually not going to use the general essay that is going to be, you know, the seven or eight prompts I think that show up on the common application this year, because what we find is most helpful are the actual supplemental essays that students provide to us that have a, give us a better understanding, again, of fit at Georgia Tech. And so for that reason, we have created two supplemental essays that you'll answer this year. They're, they're a little bit shorter. I believe they're about 250 words each. You have uh, one that's just, you have one option. And then the second supplemental essays, you'll have, you'll have an either or. So you'll have two prompts that you can choose from. So it's three prompts in total two pieces of writing. We do have those uh, essay prompts up on our website. If you're not quite ready to open the common application up yet, but you do want to start thinking about how you might approach those personal essays. And again, this is our best opportunity to hear your voice in the application process, right? Because um, we don't do interviews. And I know you're seeing interview on your screen. I'll talk about that in, in a minute. So best hearing from you about why you're excited about Georgia Tech, why you're excited about your interests and, and who you would be on the Georgia Tech's campus, this is one of the best ways that we can do that. So think about if you were gonna sit down with me or any of the folks that you're chatting with in the, the Q&A section right now, if you're gonna sit down and have a you know large jug of water, a cup of coffee, what would you want us to know? Now, recommendations are your other pieces of writing on your application, and those are, again, not required, but I would say most students submit them because perhaps one of the colleges that you're applying to requires them. So if you are going to submit those, those are one from a teacher who has taught you inside the classroom. That includes virtual classrooms, and that includes any classroom, not just math or science, right, but any academic classroom where they can tell us not just what you've done, but who you are and how you approach learning as a student. The second uh, recommendation that you can also submit is one from your high school counselor. So if there's other recommendations that you were hoping to provide, you know, we're not going to consider them, but think about, you know, what you were hoping that that person would share. Maybe it's research, maybe it's something from your job and make sure you're advocating for yourself in, in, in those areas because the recommendations that Georgia Tech will review are from the teacher inside the classroom and the counselor. So I mentioned earlier that we don't do interviews and you're seeing the word interview on your screen. So just to clear that bit up, while we don't do interviews, our alumni don't do interviews, there is an option for non-native English speakers to provide a third party interview in case they want to prove English proficiency. Since, as I mentioned earlier, we really you know, are that collaborative campus. And so not required, neither is a TOEFL or an IELTS, but students may also choose to submit those. And if that's something that you're interested in, I would encourage you to go ahead to that section of our website where you can learn a little bit more about that process. And finally on your screen here, you're seeing institutional fit. And everything we've talked about up to this point is something that you submit, right? Yet institutional fit, it is, it's something that is going to be considered for all of your colleges, but it's not necessarily something you submit. What that means is that when we look at shaping a class, when we look at bringing in this next class each year of students, we're looking at bringing in a class of just a dynamic community with diverse interests and passions and backgrounds who can learn from each other, support each other, collaborate with each other. And so really that means that your application is being considered within the larger applicant pool, right? That also means that we're also going to consider that fit within our institutional priorities. I think an excellent priority example is going to be, as we mentioned, you know, we are a public institution in the state of Georgia. And so our Georgia admit rate is higher, right? It's the, I believe it's typically about like 40% or so. And so that's not necessarily something that you submit or something that you control, but it's something that is present nevertheless. Now, I'm actually going to share something uh, that I want y'all to, to pay attention to instead of what you're seeing on your screen here. And that's my fault. I should have, um, 
updated these slides since the last time we did this presentation. We actually now have two early action deadlines. The first for our students who are in the state of Georgia is October 15th. What is new this year, because we understand that folks around the country have, you know, perhaps um, start schooling later than our students here in Georgia, is that if you're not in the state of Georgia, we now have an early action two deadline, which is November 2nd. We also have document deadlines, which are a little bit later than each of these after our early action and after our regular decision deadlines, just to give you a little bit more wiggle room to go ahead and submit your transcripts, your recommendations, test scores, so on and, and so forth. So my best advice, ignore what you're seeing on your screen there. If you can, and if you have a moment in and you want to pop open a second uh, tab in your browser, go ahead and to, to the apply first year portion of our website and you'll see all of the dates for this year laid out and the two new early action deadlines. All right, now that just about wraps up what I wanted to share sort of with you all today. And to continue this conversation, we have a few questions, but I also wanna make sure that, I, that I'm providing ways that you can explore on your own. So this, uh, you're on the upper left-hand screen. We have a wealth of pre presentations that I hope that you visit you know, and take advantage of there. So you have our own sessions, which is kind of like what we just did today. So you might not need to sign up for that, for an admission session, but you also have academic and department sessions where students can learn about, say you liked the Inventor Prize, there is a whole presentation just on innovation at Georgia Tech or different colleges like College of Computing or Sciences have their own presentations. And then we'll also have student panels and other opportunities that you can take advantage of on that page. You can also go ahead and email us. You're seeing that email uh, right there, just in case, because I know we're not gonna be able to get to every question today. And then um, I think our social media is just wonder, I'm just kidding, it's, it's great, but I manage it, so I'm just being facetious. Uh, if you go ahead onto our Facebook, our Instagram, Twitter, I'll post lots of content to keep you all updated um, throughout the year. And actually, if you have more questions after today, at GT Admission on Instagram, just plug that in your phone now and give us a follow because tomorrow I'll be doing a live Q&A on there so we can kind of keep the ball rolling here. But just want to check in on what questions that you guys might have while we're all here together right now. I saw that there was a question about switching majors, double majoring, minoring, and so just to address that at Georgia Tech. Like I said, you are going to well, um, get your admission letter without a major on it and then students have the opportunity to select their the major that they'll come into at Georgia Tech with uh, after they deposit, right? So that's the first opportunity to think about, am I still interested in the major that I put in in my application or am I interested in something else? After a student enrolls, every first year student has what we call a free unrestricted major change where they can switch you know, from any major to any major. There's just a few sort of uh, restrictions there, I believe like for example, mechanical engineering might be one of them. But by and large, there's a ton of flexibility to switch between majors for our incoming students because you're gonna take classes at Georgia Tech in areas that you've never explored before. And so you should have an open mind to some of the different disciplines that are out there and available to you. If you're interested in pursuing multiple disciplines at Georgia Tech, you know, a double major is not necessarily going to be too common. And that's because our, our, our majors are not set up to be double majors. They truly are, you would truly would be doing two separate sets of classes in a sense. And so that might impact your graduation timeline. So while students can do it, and I've absolutely seen it be done, I encourage students to think thoughtfully about what the, how they want to approach um, you know, these two interests and how they want to combine them. Does it really, do they really want it as a double major or is it a major and a minor? Because you can minor in any different college you know, that's not your own at Georgia Tech. Is it something that you want to explore outside the classroom? Is it something that you want to explore as a graduate degree? And so while students can do a double major, I also make sure that they think about you know, these other opportunities as well. 
So I saw more questions about test scores. Um, if a student can't test multiple times, like in the past, will that hurt them in the review process? And, and really, it will not. It will not. We, again, just to really kind of make sure, kind of looking into my camera right now, that we leave here with the common understanding that we have no expectation that test scores this year will look like they have in the past. We do have the understanding that testing right now is, is very different than, than previous applicants. I would not even refer to the admission profile on what tests look like in previous years because they did not have the same circumstances that you all did. And so if you only have one test, that is all that you need for, for a complete application at Georgia Tech. All right, thank you so much, Samantha, for sharing this information. Students and counselors, thank you so much for joining us for this session. As you close this window, a very quick four question survey will appear. So we do ask for your feedback on today's session. And we encourage you to sign up for additional presentations at strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM. And again, the recording of this session and all of the sessions will be made available at that exact same space that you registered for today's session. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.